CD1 Unit 1 Tape Script 1.1 Where were you born? In Scotland. What do you do? I'm a teacher. Are you married? No, I'm not. Why are you learning English? Because I need it for my job. When did you start learning English? Two years ago. How often do you have English classes? Twice a week. Tape script 1.2 Anton Christoph from Toronto, Canada Hi, I'm Anton. I come from Canada, but at the moment I'm living here in New York. I'm working as a bike messenger. I really like New York. It's the center of the universe and it's very cosmopolitan. I have friends from all over the world. I earn about a hundred dollars a day in this job. That's good money. I'm saving money for my education. I was born in Toronto, but my parents are from Bulgaria. They moved to Canada 30 years ago. When they first arrived, they didn't speak any English. They worry about me. Last month I had a bad accident on my bike, but I'm fine now. Next September I'm going back home to Toronto, and I'm going to study for a master's degree, and then I hope to get a good job. Tape Script 1.3 Rowena Lee from Melbourne, Australia Hi, I'm Rowena. I'm Australian. I come from Melbourne, but now I live in North London with my husband, David. He's English. David and I run an art gallery. It's a gallery for Australian Aboriginal art. I just love Aboriginal art. I love all the colours and shapes. I'm preparing a new exhibition at the moment. I came to England in 2006 as a student. My parents wanted me to study law, but I didn't like it. <laughs> I hated it, in fact. I left the course after three months and got a job in an art gallery. That's where I met David. Then we had the idea of opening our own gallery just for Aboriginal art, because most English people don't know anything about it. That was in 2006, and we borrowed £25,000 from the bank to do it. We're lucky, because the gallery is really successful, and we paid the money back after just five years. I go back to Australia every year. I usually go in the English winter, because it's summer in Australia. But I'm not going next year, because, you see, I'm going to have a baby in December. It's my first, so I'm very excited. Tape Script 1.4 Questions about Rowena 1. Where does she live? In North London. Who with? With her husband, David. 2. What does she do? She runs an art gallery. 3. What's she doing at the moment? She's preparing a new art exhibition. 4. When and why did she come to England? She came to England in 2006 to study law. 5. How long did she study law? For three months. 6. How much money did she borrow from the bank? £25,000. 7. How many children does she have? She doesn't have any at the moment. 8. Why is she excited? Because she's going to have a baby. Tape Script 1.5 Questions to Serkan Hi, Serkan. Nice to meet you. Can I ask you one or two questions? Yes, of course. First of all, where do you come from? I'm from Istanbul, in Turkey. And why are you here in England? Well, I'm here mainly because I want to improve my English. Hmm. How much English did you know before you came? Not a lot. I studied English at school, 
but I didn't learn much. Now I'm studying in a language school here. Oh, which school? The Shakespeare School of English. <laughs> a good name. Your English is very good now. Who's your teacher? Thank you very much. My teacher's called David. He's great. What did you do back in Turkey? Well, actually, I was a teacher, a history teacher. I taught children from fourteen to eighteen. How many children were in your classes? Sometimes as many as forty. Goodness, that's a lot. How often do you go back home? Usually, I go every two months. But this month, my brother is coming here. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm going to show him round. Well, I hope your brother has a great visit. Tape script one point six. Whose or whose? One. Whose phone is ringing? It's mine. Two. Who's calling? It's my brother. Tape script one point seven. One. Whose phone is ringing? It's mine. Two. Who's calling? It's my brother. Three. Who's on the phone? Four. I'm going to the pub. Who's coming? Five. Whose coat is this? It's not mine. Six. Whose are all these CDs? Seven. Who's going to Tina's wedding? Eight. Do you know whose glasses they are? Tape script one point eight. Questions about you. One. What do you like doing in your free time? Two. Do you like listening to music? Three. What kind of music do you like? Four. What did you do last weekend? Five. What are you doing tonight? Six. What are you going to do after this lesson? Seven. How many languages does your teacher speak? Eight. What's your teacher wearing today? Tape script one point nine. Listen and compare. What do you like doing in your free time? I like being with my friends. We go to each other's houses and chat. Do you like listening to music? Yes, of course. I have an iPod. What kind of music do you like? I like all kinds: rock, jazz, pop. But the thing I like best is listening to my dad's old Beatles albums. <laughs> What did you do last weekend? It was my mum's birthday, so we all cooked a special meal for her. What are you doing tonight?、Mm, nothing much. I want to get an early night before the weekend. What are you going to do after this lesson? I have a bit of shopping to do. Then I'm going home. How many languages does your teacher speak? Only English. She says she's going to learn Italian next year. What's your teacher wearing today? A very pink jumper and red trousers. Mm, not a great look. Tape script one point ten. My oldest friend. One. Kenny talking to Judy. Kenny, I see you have more than three hundred friends on Facebook. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? I don't know how it happened. I think it's because my job takes me all over the world, and I make friends wherever I go. I travel too, but I don't have that many friends. Come on, Judy. I'm your friend. That's one friend at least. <laughs> but what about close friends? How many of the three hundred are close? I have no idea. No idea. More than ten? 
More than twenty?、Uh, probably no more than ten really close friends. So, who's your oldest friend? That's easy. Pete's my oldest friend. Since we were both sixteen, and he came to my school. He lives in Canada now, but he was best man at my wedding, and I was best man at his. How often do you see him? Not often. Maybe once or twice a year. I went over to Canada last year when his son was born. Do you know he named him Ken after me? Hey, that's lovely. You and Pete are really good friends, aren't you? Yeah. Why do you think that is? <laughs> It's our love of football. Don't tell me he supports Liverpool too. Of course, best team in the world. No, seriously, the best thing about Pete is that maybe we don't see each other for months, even years. But when we get together, immediately we're talking about football. <laughs> <laughs> no, about all kinds of things. Our families mainly. He's a great guy. Two. Damien talking to Toby. Am I your best friend? No, silly. You're my brother. I'm not silly. Can't I be your best friend? No, you can't. No one's best friends with his brother. But I don't have many friends. That's your problem. Look, I'm going to meet Thomas and the gang now. Is Thomas your best friend? No. Is he your oldest friend? No. Zach's my oldest friend. You know that. Since we sat next to each other in class one, Zach and me are going to travel the world together when we finish school. Can I come? No, you can't. Just shut. Well, can Thomas be my friend? Toby, be quiet about friends. Oh, you're so boring. I'm not surprised you have no friends. But can I? No, no, no. I'm off. See ya. Three, Katie talking to Beth. Katie, you're lucky. You have so many friends. Hmm, I suppose so. I do have quite a lot. Why do you think that is? Well, I'm not sure. I think I kind of collect friends. I have friends from all different times in my life. You know, school, university, and now at work. And I keep my friends. So. Who's your oldest friend? You are, of course. <laughs> you and me, Beth. We're the same age, twenty-four, and you could say we met before we were born. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Yeah, <laughs> our mums met when they were. I know they met at the hospital when they went for checkups before we were born. Yeah, and we were born on the same day. I know, but I'm ten hours older than you. That's why you're wiser than me. <laughs> you're my oldest and my best friend. You're like a sister to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tape script one point eleven. A survey. How do couples meet? A survey of over ten thousand couples asked them how they first met. The top three were first, with twenty-two percent, at work. Second, with twenty percent. Through friends, and third, with fifteen percent, at school or university. Next, with twelve percent, was meeting online. Nowadays, more and more couples are meeting this way. Just eight percent met at a bar or club, and five percent through the family, which was quite surprising. Only four percent met on a blind date, perhaps not so surprising. Last of all, just one percent met while shopping, so don't go looking for love in the supermarket. That leaves just thirteen percent who didn't meet in any of these places. Tape script one point twelve. What happened next, Dominic? I sent Sally a text a couple of days after the date. She played it cool and didn't reply for two days. We met up a week later, went for a walk, and then to the cinema. <laughs> We're still seeing each other. She's helping me train for the marathon, which is next month. She's going to come and watch me. 
Also, she came to the theatre to watch my play, and she said she liked it. I'm going to meet her parents next weekend. <laughs> I'm a bit worried about that, but I enjoy being with her a lot. Sally, when Dom texted, I knew I wanted to answer, but I made him wait. I'm not sure why. Silly, really, because I really do like him. I enjoyed seeing him act. I think he's a very good actor, but I didn't really understand the play. He's coming to meet my family next weekend. I don't usually take my boyfriends home so soon, but with Dom it's different. I have a good feeling about this relationship. Will it last? Um, ask me again a year from now. Tape script one point thirteen. Words with two meanings. One. Turn left in the high street, and my house is first on the right. She left hurriedly to catch her bus. Two. I love travelling by train. He's going to train for the marathon. Three. I'm going to run a marathon next month. They run the art gallery together. Four. I'm working at home for the rest of the week. I need a rest. I'm so tired. Five. What kind of books do you like reading? How kind of you to bring me some flowers. Six. Our flat's on the fourth floor of a big apartment block. Holland is a very flat country. Seven. What do you mean? I don't understand you. He never even buys me a coffee. He's very mean. Tape script one point fourteen. Listen and repeat. One. Hi, Anna. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Two. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Three. Can I help you? No, thank you. I'm just looking. Four. Excuse me. Is that seat free? No, sorry. I'm afraid it isn't. Tape script one point fifteen. Social expressions. One. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely day again. Two. See you tomorrow. Yeah, about nine in the coffee bar. Three. How do you do? How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Four. Thank you very much indeed. Don't mention it. My pleasure. Five. I'm sorry, I can't come tonight. Never mind. Perhaps another time. Six. Can you help me with this exercise? Of course. What's the problem? Seven. Bye. Bye. See you later. Eight. Bye. Have a good weekend. Thanks. Same to you. Nine. Sorry, I'm late. It doesn't matter. You're here now. Ten. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to your new job. Tape script one point sixteen. Conversations. One. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely day again. Yes, it's really warm for the time of year. Two. See you tomorrow. Yeah, about nine in the coffee bar. Fine. Nine is good for me too. Three. How do you do? How do you do? 
Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you too. Four. Thank you very much indeed. Don't mention it. My pleasure. It was so kind of you. Five. I'm sorry, I can't come tonight. Never mind. Perhaps another time. I'm free tomorrow night. What about that? Six. Can you help me with this exercise? Of course. What's the problem? I don't know what this word means. Seven. Bye. Bye. See you later. Yes, let's meet after class. Eight. Bye. Have a good weekend. Thanks. Same to you. Thanks. Are you doing anything special? Nine. Sorry, I'm late. It doesn't matter. You're here now. Yeah, I missed the bus. Ten. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to your new job. Thanks a lot. I'm excited, but a bit nervous. Unit two, tape script two point one. Mammy Rock, the Granny DJ. Ruth Flowers is not an ordinary grandmother. She's in her seventies and has silver hair and bright red lipstick. She's a DJ and works in clubs in Europe and tours festivals. She lives alone in Bristol. She says, "I've got a son." And a grandson. They think what I'm doing is very cool. She likes rock bands such as Queen and the Rolling Stones, but she also plays electro and dance music. I love being with young people. She says, "They've got so much energy and enthusiasm." She's planning another European tour, and is currently making a new single. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun," she says. "I don't want it to stop." Tape script two point two. The Super Jam Millionaire. Fraser Doherty is an extraordinary young man. He has his own company, Super Jam, which he started when he was just sixteen. I earn more money than my parents," he says. His company makes jam, five hundred thousand jars every year, using a secret recipe from his grandmother. All the major supermarkets sell his products. The business is growing fast. Four flavors at the moment, but more on the way. And he has a charity that organizes huge tea parties for old people, with live music and dancing. At the moment, I'm very busy. I'm writing a cookbook. I've got an idea for a TV program, and we're trying to get into the American market. Tape script two point three. Ruth Flowers. What does Ruth do? She's a DJ. Where does she work? She works in clubs in Europe. How many children does she have? She has one son. And she also has a grandson. What sort of music does she like? She likes Queen and the Rolling Stones, and she also likes electro and dance music. Why does she like young people so much? Because they're so energetic and enthusiastic. What's she doing at the moment? She's planning another European tour, and she's making a new single. Fraser Doherty. What does Fraser do? He has his own company that makes jam. How much does he earn? He earns more than his parents. How many jars of jam does he make every year? He makes half a million jars a year. Whose recipe does he use? His grandmother's. It's a secret recipe. What's he writing? He's writing a cookbook. What's he trying to do? He's trying to get into the American market. Tape script two point four. An interview with Ruth. 
Do you like being famous? <laughs> oh, don't be silly. I'm not really famous. I'm just an old lady who's having fun. But it is unusual for someone your age, if you don't mind me saying, to be DJing in clubs for young people. <sighs> well, I just like the music. And I don't want to be an old woman in an old people's home, watching television all day long and going to church once a week. Why do you do it? I DJ because the energy is fantastic. Because I love to see young people enjoying themselves. Because it makes me happy. Does your family agree with you? <laughs> my family thinks it's great. Some of my friends say that it's not right for a woman my age to be wearing these clothes and staying out all night. <laughs> and what do you say to them? Huh. I say it's none of their business. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you want to do something, you can. Tape script 2.5. An interview with Fraser. Do you like being a businessman? Oh, yes, I love it. I like the planning, the marketing, the selling. I like meeting people and talking about my business and everything about it. It seems to me you really love what you're doing. It's true, I do. Do you have any free time? Uh, a bit, but not a lot. What do you do in your free time? I go out with my friends. I go to clubs. I love walking. Have you got a girlfriend? Well, uh, that's none of your business. Sorry. Um, who do you live with? I live with a group of friends in a flat in Edinburgh. It's not far from my parents' house. Do you see much of your parents? I see them all the time. We're very close. Tape script 2.6 do you have a car? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Have you got a bike? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. I don't have a camera. I haven't got an iPod. Tape script 2.7 Things I like doing Play games on my PlayStation. Go out with my friends. Download music and films. Send emails and texts. Shop for clothes online. Have a lie-in. Relax in front of the TV. Meet friends for a drink. Listen to music. Go out for a meal. Get a takeaway pizza. Do nothing. Read magazines. Chat to friends online. Go to the gym. Watch a football match live on TV. Tape script 2.8. Listen, check and practice. 1. I like shopping in the high street, but mainly I shop online. Two. When I hear a band I like, I download their music from the internet. 3. I listen to music on my iPod when I go jogging. 4. I spend hours chatting to friends online, even though I'm with them all day at school. 5. Sometimes I like to chill out at home and do nothing. 6. I'm always so tired after work, I just want to relax in front of the TV. 7. On Saturdays, I have a lie-in and don't get up till midday. 8. Do you want to cook tonight or shall we get a takeaway pizza? 9. It's Pete's birthday tonight, so we're going out for a meal. Indian, I think. 10. I like keeping fit. I go to the gym three times a week. 
Tape Script 2.9 Money The best things in life are free But you can give them to the birds and bees I want money Your love gives me such a thrill But your love won't pay my bills I want money Tape Script 2.10 Two Neighbours Mrs Crumble I have the flat above that young man I think his name is Alfie Smith because I see the postman delivering his letters. He never says hello. He hasn't got a job. Well, he doesn't go out to work at eight in the morning, and that's for sure. He doesn't get up till the afternoon, and he wears jeans and a T-shirt all the time. He never looks smart. He certainly never wears a suit. Goodness knows where he gets his money from. It's funny. I never hear him in the evening. I've no idea what he does in the evening. There are people coming and going in and out of his flat all day long. I have no idea how many people are staying. Four? Five? Have none of them got jobs? He's got a girlfriend. She's very pretty. Blonde hair. Dyed. She's living with him. I know a lot of young people live together these days, but I don't like it. Living together and not married. It's not right. He always makes such a noise. Listen, there he is now. Music. He's listening to music. Why can't he turn it down? It's so loud. Young people these days have no manners. They live in their own world and they just don't care about other people. They don't even notice old people like me. He probably doesn't know who I am. Tape Script 2.11 Two Neighbours Alfie I've got this new flat. It's so nice. I really love it. I'm having such a good time. The only thing is, it's below an old lady, and that's a bit difficult. Her name's Mrs Crumble. <laughs> I always say hello when I see her. How are you, Mrs Crumble? Nice day, Mrs Crumble, and all that. But she never replies. She just looks at me. I think she's deaf. She probably thinks I'm unemployed because I don't go out to work in the morning and I don't wear a suit. I think I wear really cool clothes. Well, I'm a musician. I play the saxophone and at the moment I'm playing in a jazz club. I don't start till eight at night, and I don't finish till two in the morning, so I sleep from three till eleven. There is only me living here, but my flat's a bit busy at the moment because some of the other guys in the band are using it to keep their instruments in, so they're always coming in and out. <laughs> I've got a lovely girlfriend. She's the singer in the band. She's so beautiful. <laughs> She lives the other side of town, but obviously I see her every day because we work together. She comes to my place sometimes. Um, I know I make a bit of noise because I practice my saxophone. <laughs> see what I mean? What can I do? I have to practice somewhere. I know that old Mrs Crumble is always watching me. It's sad because she has nothing to do. I feel sorry for her. And I'm always really kind to her, like I am to my own grandmother. But she's so suspicious of young people. She thinks we're all no good and take drugs. It's just not true. I work really hard. Tape Script 2.12 Making Conversation 1. John and Maria Hello, my name's John. What's your name? Maria. Hi, Maria. Where are you from? Italy. Ah, OK. Where in Italy are you from? Roma. 
Ah, Rome. I love Rome. It's beautiful. And what do you do in Rome? I'm a student. I see. And are you enjoying being in London? Yes. Well, I've got a class now, Maria. Bye. See you again. Bye. Not in my class, I hope. Two, Maggie and Jean Jacques. Hello, my name's Maggie. What's your name? My name is Jean Jacques. Nice to meet you, Maggie. And you? Where are you from, Jean Jacques? I'm French. I live in Paris,、uh, Paris, as you say in English.、Uh, but I'm from the south, from Provence. Do you know the south of France? Yes, I do. It's beautiful. <laughs> It's true. It is. And you, Maggie? Where are you from? I'm from Scotland. Oh, really? I've never been there, but I'd like to. It's a beautiful country, isn't it? Very. Lots of mountains and lakes. What do you do in France, Jean Jacques? I'm an architect. I design very expensive houses for very rich people. <laughs>、oh, wow, that's an interesting job.、Mm. Are you enjoying being in London? Yes, I am very much. I'm having a really good time. I think London's a really interesting city, and there's so much to do. And you, Maggie, what do you do? Well, I'm a teacher. I work here. Oh, really? What class are you teaching? Three B. Oh, great! That's my class. You're my teacher. Oh, how lovely! Well, it's nine o'clock. Let's go to class. What a good idea! I'll follow you. Tape script two point thirteen. Making conversation. One. What a lovely day it is today. Yes, beautiful, isn't it? Much nicer than yesterday. Two. Are you having a good time in London? Yes, I am. It's a very interesting city. There's so much to do. I love the shops. Three. Have a good weekend. Thanks. Same to you. Are you doing anything interesting? Four. Did you have a nice weekend? Yes, I did. It was really good. I saw some old friends. What did you do? Five. What are you doing tonight? Nothing special. Just at home. What about you? Six. How's your mother these days? She's okay, thanks. She's feeling a lot better. Thank you for asking. Seven. Did you watch the football last night? No, I didn't. I missed it. Was it a good game? Eight. I like your shoes. Thank you. They're new. I got them last week in the sales. They're nice, aren't they? Nine. If you have a problem, just ask me. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. I will. Tape script two point fourteen. Keeping a conversation going. I was on holiday last month. Oh really? Did you go away? Yes, I went to Italy. How wonderful! Italy's beautiful, isn't it? I think it's fabulous. I love all the history. Yes, and the buildings and all the art. Where did you go? Well, first I went to Florence, and I spent a few days going round the museums. Oh, fantastic! Did you see the statue of David? Oh yes, amazing! And then I went to see some friends who live in the countryside around Siena. Wow! Lucky you. Did you have good weather? Well, actually, the first day. Unit three, tape script three point one, walking the Amazon. Amazing journey ends after six thousand miles. Ed Stafford became the first man in history to walk the length of the Amazon River from the source to the sea. He walked 
for 860 days. The journey began in April 2008 when Ed left the town of Camana on the Pacific coast of Peru. It ended in August 2010 when he arrived in Maruda on the Atlantic coast of Brazil. He went through three countries, Peru, Colombia and Brazil. The journey took nearly two and a half years. I did it for the adventure, says Ed. Tapescript 3.2 Questions and Answers 1. How far did Ed walk? He walked 6,000 miles. 2. When did the journey begin? It began in April 2008. 3. Where did the journey end? It ended in Maruda, on the Atlantic coast of Brazil. 4. Which countries did he go through? He went through Peru, Colombia and Brazil. 5. How long did the journey take? It took nearly two and a half years. 6. Why did he do it? He did it for the adventure. Tapescript 3.3 what was Cho doing when he met Ed? He was working in the forest. Where were they walking when they saw the tribe? They were walking in a very dangerous part of the forest. Why did the tribe think Ed was crazy? Because he was walking the Amazon for an adventure. Tapescript 3.4 Ed's blog The 12th of July the day I nearly died. Today I was walking next to the river when I nearly stood on a snake. I stopped immediately. The snake's fangs were going in and out. I was terrified. I didn't move. One bite and you're dead in three hours. The 10th of September. Knives and guns. Early this morning... We were crossing the river by boat when we saw five canoes. The tribesmen were carrying knives and guns. They were angry because we didn't have permission to be on their land. We left as fast as we could. The 24th of November, the jungle at night. I was lying in my hammock last night trying to sleep, but it was impossible because the noise of the jungle was so loud. Monkeys were screaming in the trees, and millions of mosquitoes were buzzing round my head. I took a sleeping pill and finally fell asleep at 3 a.m. Tapescript 3.5 Pronunciation D T Id D Stayed Played Phoned. Answered. T. Stopped. Worked. Laughed. Looked. Id. Decided. Studied. Wanted. Mended. Tapescript 3.6 Pronunciation We stayed in a hotel. They played on the beach. She phoned a friend. I answered all the questions. They stopped at lunchtime. I worked in a bank. We laughed and laughed. I looked at the photo. We decided immediately. I studied at university. She wanted a cup of tea. I mended it. Tapescript 3.7 I was having dinner. What was she wearing? They were playing football. Where were you going? He wasn't listening. They weren't enjoying the party. Tapescript 3.8 The News
Here are the news headlines. A car bomb in Moscow kills three people. Thieves steal paintings worth $80 million from a New York museum. A national strike in France brings the country to a stop. The 71-year-old actor James Robertson dies at his home in California. And in the European Cup, Arsenal beat Real Madrid. Tape script 3.9 A car bomb exploded in central Moscow yesterday morning, killing three people who were shopping in a market and injuring many more. Most of those injured were women who were out shopping for food in the early morning and children who were on holiday. Terrorists say they planted the bomb. Last night, thieves in New York broke into the Museum of Modern Art and escaped with three paintings by Picasso valued at $80 million. Cameras were recording the rooms all the time, but the guard who was watching the screen saw nothing. Museum officials didn't discover the theft until the next morning. A national strike in France yesterday brought the country to a complete stop. Offices, banks, schools and shops all closed, and there were no trains or buses throughout the whole country. Workers were protesting for higher pay, longer holidays and a shorter working week. The actor James Robertson died last night at his home in Hollywood, California. He was suffering from cancer. With him were his five children, his ex-wife and his second wife, Cherie. The 71-year-old actor is best known for his role as the cowboy Dexter in Mad Men of the West. And finally, sport. Arsenal last night beat Real Madrid 2-1. At halftime, the Spanish side were winning 1-0, but then two goals by Johansson gave the London team a win. Tape script 3.10 A dictation Last night, thieves in New York broke into the Museum of Modern Art and escaped with three paintings by Picasso, comma, valued at eighty million dollars, full stop. Cameras were recording the rooms all the time comma but the guard who was watching the screens saw nothing, full stop. Museum officials didn't discover the theft until the next morning. Full stop. Tape script 3.11 Adverbs 1. Please drive carefully through our village. 2. 
Romeo loved Juliet passionately. Three. My mother speaks three languages fluently. Four. It rained heavily every day last week. Five. He waited patiently for his girlfriend, but she didn't turn up. Six. The soldiers fought bravely, but many of them lost their lives. Tape script three point twelve. One. My grandma is nearly seventy-five, and she still goes swimming regularly. Two. Do you really love me? Of course I do. I'll always love you. Three. I was just relaxing with a really good book when someone knocked loudly on the door. Four. My sister is only three, but she can already read and she can write too. Five. First, break the eggs into a bowl with some milk and butter, then heat it gently. When it's ready, serve the scrambled eggs immediately with toast. Six. Almost all my friends have a mobile phone. They're on Facebook as well. Even my dad's on Facebook. Tape script three point thirteen. The burglar who fell asleep. Last Sunday evening, a burglar broke into a large, expensive house in the center of Paris. First, he went into the living room, and he quickly and quietly filled his sack with all the silverware. And a priceless Chinese vase. Next, he went to the kitchen and found some delicious cheese and two bottles of the best champagne. He was feeling extremely hungry and thirsty, so he ate all the cheese and drank all the champagne. Suddenly, he felt very tired. He went upstairs to the bedroom. And lay down on a big, comfortable bed, and immediately fell fast asleep. He slept very well. Unfortunately, when he woke up the next morning, three policemen were standing round his bed. Tape script three point fourteen. Dates. What's the date today? March the eighteenth. Tomorrow's the nineteenth. The day after tomorrow's the twentieth. When's your birthday? November the eighth. Oh, that's next week. What's your date of birth? Twelve nine eighty seven. Sorry, what was that? The twelfth of the ninth eighty seven. What year were you born? Nineteen eighty-two. Oh, you're the same age as me. Tape script three point fifteen. The third of February. February the third. The sixth of April. April the sixth. The twelfth of July. July the twelfth. The twenty-fifth of December. December the twenty-fifth. The first of May, May the first. The sixteenth of August, August the sixteenth. The thirteenth of January, January the thirteenth. The thirty-first of October, October the thirty-first. Tape script three point sixteen. February third, April sixth. July twelfth, December twenty fifth, May first, August sixteenth, January thirteenth, October thirty first. Tape script three point seventeen. One. When did man first land on the moon? On July the twentieth, nineteen sixty nine. 
Two. When's your wedding anniversary? November the eighth. Three. When did the Berlin Wall come down? The ninth of November, nineteen eighty-nine. Four. When was your son born? July the twenty-first, two thousand and ten. Five. What's the expiry date on your credit card? O six eighteen. Unit Four, Tape Script Four Point One. Questions about the diet. One. Today we are talking to a couple who are following the calorie restriction diet. So my first question is, do you eat any meat? No, we don't eat any meat at all, but we eat some fish. Two. How much fish do you eat? We eat a little white fish, but we love shellfish, so we eat a lot of prawns. Three, do you eat much fruit? Oh yes, we eat a lot of fresh fruit, apples and grapes, but everything. Four, and do you eat many vegetables? Yes, of course, we eat lots of raw vegetables. Five. Don't you cook any vegetables at all? We cook some. Sometimes we steam a few carrots and a little broccoli. Six. And what do you drink? Well, we don't drink any tea or coffee, and naturally there's no alcohol in our diet. But we do drink a lot of orange juice. Seven. How many calories do you have every day? About one thousand five hundred. That's about one thousand fewer than most people. Tape script four point two. Following the diet. Tell us some more about the diet. Well, I think we have a good diet.、Mm -hmm. We enjoy the food we do eat. For breakfast, we have cereal, homemade cereal. <laughs>、uh, we make it ourselves. We have it with fruit. We eat all fruit, but we don't eat any dairy products.、Mm. No milk, no cheese, and we don't eat bread, so we don't need butter. We use olive oil instead. We often have it on salad for lunch with tomatoes and lots of nuts,、mm. and sometimes green peppers stuffed with rice.、Oh. <laughs> so you eat rice. What about pasta and potatoes? Oh no, not at all. We don't eat anything made from potatoes.、Mm, no crisps or chips then. And I'm guessing you eat nothing made with sugar. You're right.、Ah. <laughs> We make fresh juice to drink, but with no sugar. Uh huh. And uh, nothing alcoholic, of course. What about water? Well. We don't drink any tap water. <laughs> really? Why not? It's not good for you.、Mm. We drink a little mineral water sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. Well, I hope you live to be a hundred and twenty, but I'm sure I won't be around to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Tape script four point three. Something, someone, somewhere. One. Did you meet anyone nice at the party? Yes, I met somebody who knows you. Oh, who was that? Your ex-boyfriend. Two. Ouch! There's something in my eye. Let me look. No, I can't see anything. But I can feel it somewhere in the corner of my eye. Three. Let's go somewhere hot for our holidays. But we can't go anywhere that's too expensive. I know, but we can afford this package holiday to Turkey. Four. Where are my glasses? I can't find them anywhere. What are they on the top of your head? My glasses. Thank you. Five. It was a great party. Everybody loved it. They did. Nobody wanted to go home. I know. A few people were still dancing at three a.m. Six. Did you get anything nice in the sales? 
No, nothing. I couldn't find anything I liked. Why not try shopping online? You can buy everything online these days. Tape script four point four. What's the missing word? Do you know famous? The fridge is empty. There's to eat. The lights are off. There's at home. Pete's a great bloke. Likes him. We always go. Nice to eat. I can't go to the party. I haven't got. Nice to wear. Has. Seen my keys. I can't find my keys. Tape script four point five. My grandfather's shop. My grandfather lived until he was a hundred and one years old. He was a shopkeeper. He had a fish and chip shop in an old village near a big industrial town in the north of England. He had a son and a daughter. The daughter is my mother. The family lived above the shop. In those days, fish and chips was the most popular dish in the whole country. My grandfather made the best fish and chips in the area. People came to the village by bus, especially to get them. Everybody loved my grandfather because he was such a happy and contented man. He worked hard, but once a week he closed the shop and went to have lunch, not fish and chips, with friends in the local pub. He didn't retire until he was seventy-eight years old. He said that the secret to a long life was a glass of whiskey before going to bed and lots of fish and chips. Tape script four point six. Articles. My grandfather was a shopkeeper. He lived in the north of England. He had a fish and chip shop in an old village. His family lived above the shop. He made the best fish and chips in the area. Some people came by bus to the shop. He closed the shop once a week. He went to have lunch with friends. He liked to have a little whiskey before bed. Tape script four point seven. Unusual restaurants. One, Alexander. We were on honeymoon and we saw some brochures about this restaurant. It was my wife's birthday, so I thought, why not? It's expensive, but you don't find many restaurants like this. It was difficult to get a reservation because it only takes twelve people. When we arrived, we had drinks on the deck above. And someone gave us a talk about how they built the restaurant, and then we took off our shoes and descended, down, down the spiral stairs, and into the restaurant. Actually, the restaurant itself isn't very exciting, the decor, I mean, but it doesn't need to be because what is totally amazing is the view. It takes your breath away. All around and above your head are hundreds. Maybe thousands of fish, all colours, in a blue, blue sea. I was sitting opposite my wife when a turtle appeared just behind her head. In fact, we were so busy looking at it all, we almost forgot that we were there to eat. The food was delicious, fish, of course, but to be honest, we felt a bit bad eating white fish surrounded by white fish. There was just one problem: a guest at the next table. He spoke really loudly and complained about everything. We couldn't find anything to complain about. It was the perfect honeymoon restaurant. Two, Hans. I booked online, of course. It's the only way you can book, 
and I went with my sons. They are five and eight years old, and I thought they would like it a lot. They were very excited. They had the idea that the waiters were robots. So when we arrived and there was nobody there at all, they were a bit disappointed. But the whole place was amazing. It was like walking inside a computer. So the boys soon became excited again. We picked up a card and sat down at one of the big round red tables. The boys loved the touch screen TVs. They got the idea immediately and started choosing food from the pictures. While we were waiting, they were texting their mother to tell her how fantastic it all was. In just a few minutes, pots with our meals inside came flying down the spiral tubing in the middle of the table. The boys couldn't believe it. They were shouting with excitement. We all had steak and salad. And then the boys had baked bananas with ice cream and chocolate. It was delicious. There was an older lady sitting next to us. She was a bit confused, so we helped her. She said, "I think this is more for young people than people my age. Maybe she's right." Three, Lucy. I was hungry when I arrived at the restaurant. But when I saw the crane, I forgot about being hungry. I was so frightened. The host, David, said, "Don't worry, it's a hundred percent safe." Ha! <laughs> I'm sure a few of the other guests felt like me. They looked very pale. Anyway, we sat down at this huge table, fastened our seatbelts, and up, up, up we went. I couldn't look down. Everyone was saying, "What a wonderful view!" But I just couldn't look. Then one of the waiters put a glass of wine in my hand, and I opened my eyes, and the view was amazing. People were waving to us from the ground. They probably thought we were mad. The weather was perfect, thank goodness. Just a little breeze. I began to enjoy it. The other guests were all great fun. I didn't know anyone at the start, but I soon made some friends, and the food was good too. Especially the prawns, the chef cooked them in front of us on a tiny cooker. But best of all was at the end, when everybody learnt my name. They started singing, "Lucy in the sky with diamonds." No diamonds, but I was certainly in the sky. I was quite sorry when we came down to earth again. Tape script four point eight. A piece of paper. A loaf of bread, a bottle of beer, a can of coke, a kilo of apples, a liter of petrol, a packet of chewing gum, a pair of jeans, a slice of cake, a bunch of bananas. Tape script four point nine. Going shopping. One. Just this copy of the Times, please. That's one pound exactly. Sorry, I only have a twenty-pound note. No problem. I've got change. Thanks. Oh, and can I have a packet of chewing gum as well? Okay, that's one pound seventy-nine now, please. Two. Excuse me. How much is this pair of socks? They're four pounds sixty a pair. Okay. Can I have two pairs, please? Have you got any in blue? I'm afraid they only come in grey and black. Never mind. A black and a grey pair, please. That's nine pounds twenty altogether. How would you like to pay? Three. Good morning. Can we have two double espressos and a latte, please? What size latte? Just medium, please. Oh, and three slices of chocolate cake. It looks delicious. I'm afraid there are only two slices left. But the carrot cake's good too. Okay, and one slice of carrot cake then. Certainly, that's eleven pounds eighty. Four. Can you help me? I need something for a very bad cold. Yes, of course. Are you allergic to aspirin? No, I'm not. Okay, take these three times a day. Thank you. 
Do you want a bottle or a pack? I don't mind. A bottle's fine. And can I have two packets of tissues as well, please? Sure. Anything else? No, that's all. How much is that? That's five pounds forty altogether. Five. Five cans of beer and four packets of crisps, please. How old are you? Uh, I'm eighteen. Well, you don't look eighteen. He is eighteen. And you look about twelve. Have you got any ID? Uh, not with me. I haven't. Then I can't sell you the beer. Oh, okay. Just the packets of crisps then, and two cans of coke. Six. Good morning. What can I get for you? Uh, three. No, make that four slices of ham, please. Organic ham. Okay, that's、uh, four slices. Anything else? Yes. Can I have that large piece of cheese? The cheddar. That's right. How much is that? Eight pounds thirty-five. Oh. But you don't pay here. You pay at the checkout with your other goods. Oh, okay. And can you tell me where the fruit and veg are? They're on the first aisle over there. Oh, thanks very much.、Uh, I'm lost in this place. It's my first time, and it's huge. Tape script four point ten. Friends for dinner. One. Would you like some more rice? No, thanks. But could I have another piece of bread? Of course. Do you want white or brown? Two. Could you pass the salt, please? Yes, of course. Do you want the pepper too? No, thanks. Just the salt. Three. Can I have some water, please? Do you want still or sparkling? Just a glass of tap water is fine, thank you. Four. Please just help yourselves to the dessert. Mmm, we will. It looks fantastic. Did you make it yourself? I did. It's my grandmother's recipe. Five. Would anybody like some more ice cream? No, but I'd love some more fruit. Is there any left? There is a bit. It's all yours. Six. How would you like your coffee? Black, no sugar. Have you got any decaf? No, sorry, I'm afraid not. But we've got decaf tea. Would that be okay? Seven. Mmm, this is delicious. Would you mind giving me the recipe? No, not at all. I got it online. I'll give you the website. Thanks. I get lots of my recipes online too. Eight. Do you want some help with the washing up? No, of course not. You're our guests. Well, I hope you have a dishwasher. There's a lot. Tape script four point eleven. Polite requests with can and could. One. Can I have some apple juice, please? Sorry, we haven't got any apple juice. Will orange juice do? Two. Could you tell me where Market Street is, please? Sorry, I'm afraid I'm a stranger here myself. Three. Can I see the menu, please? Here you are. Today's specials are on the board over there. Four. Could I use your iPad for a few minutes, please? Eva's using it at the moment, but you can have it after her. Five. Could you lend me twenty pounds, please? Hmm. I can lend you ten, but not twenty. Six. Can you take me to school, please? Goodness, is that the time? We're going to be late. Seven. Can you help me with my homework, please? Okay, but I'm not very good at maths. Eight. 
Could you give me a lift to the station, please? Of course. What time's your train? TypeScript 4.12. Polite requests with Would you mind? Would you mind lending me twenty pounds? I'll pay you back tomorrow. No, not at all. Is twenty enough? Would you mind taking me to school, please? I missed the bus. Not again. That's the third time this week. Would you mind helping me with my homework? I have no idea how to do it. I don't mind helping you, but I'm not doing it for you. Would you mind giving me a lift to the station? I've got a lot of heavy bags to carry. Not at all. Are you ready to go now?